You remember Dwayne Haskins? Uh, I had forgotten about Dwayne Haskins until you brought him <laughs> up. I actually forgot that he was in the league, and now he's with your Pittsburgh Steelers. I'd forgotten he, that. Until he you is told with me. the. And now, now, don't get me wrong. Just because he's with the Steelers does not mean that I am all of a sudden. He might a be fan. the best quarterback on the roster, Gary. It's entirely possible. Um, there's a, there's a world in which he's the best quarterback on the roster. It's possible, I suppose. I'm not going to argue that. What I am going to argue is <laughs> what he came out and said. This is the first time that he has spoken since he was released from Washington and then picked up by the Steelers. Okay. Uh, he said that he has one primary goal. This is an article by Book, uh, Brooke Pryor at ESPN. said he has one primary goal as he attempts to reboot his career with the Steelers. Quote, I just wanted to prove to the coaching staff and my teammates how much I love football. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here and showing them that my mind is in the right place and I'm willing to work to be able to show my talents and be able to work and earn a spot here. One of the big things as to why he was cut from Washington after, what, a year and a half uh, after yeah. being a first-round draft pick is yep. it was widely circulated that this kid just don't love fo- uh, football. He doesn't, he doesn't like football. He doesn't want to work. Yeah. He doesn't want to work, and he doesn't want to follow the rules. So this was during a pandemic, and he refused to stop going to strip clubs or all these different things that were going to put him at risk uh, of spreading the virus or whatever. They were basically team rules, and, and he just – just was not going to follow him. Did not care. How are you supposed to prove that you love football? No, you can't You can't prove anything with words. You just go, <laughs> you show up every day. You show up every day and you go to work. And in about six weeks of you going to work every day and working your ass off and just doing the best you can with no distractions, no problems, no issues, and and you show them you care. The, the, the question's not just that he's got to show that he cares. It also has to show that he has the ability to be there. Yeah. Because in Washington, he wasn't good at all. Now, many of those uh, reasons why he wasn't good is he refused to, like, be capable of learning the playbook. So I don't know if that was a I didn't try or I'm not I, – I, he wasn't capable of it or, or what. But that's an issue. We haven't even seen if he is capable. How good is he? Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. So like, these are he, these are all question marks. He only started for one season at Ohio State, and and yeah. it makes perfect sense for him to have left to go to the NFL uh, to collect his paycheck, right? Yeah, like, cash that money, baby. Cash the money. I would have. Hey, listen, I'd have done it. You holding a lottery ticket? Go. Yeah, yeah. Um, Especially because Justin Fields is coming in right behind you. Like, oh, you, no, you know you're not starting in front yeah. of that guy. So you, you may as well get out. But um, it, going to the Redskins, like this is one of those situations where the team you get drafted by, like it's a it's a pretty big deal, right? Because he had to go through a coaching change. He went through another offensive. Like he, he had multiple different coaches in his time between Ohio State and Washington, right? He, he went with Urban Meyer to Ryan Day to – uh, God, who was there? Who uh, uh, who was the coach before Rivera? Uh, not Glazer. What was the guy's name? Oh, Jay. Um, Jay, Jay Gruden. Jay Gruden, thank you. Yeah, yeah uh, Chucky's brother. Um, yeah. And then it goes to Ron Rivera. Like, he's been with four different coaches in, like, three and a half seasons. Like, it's ridiculous. So, I, I get, like, how he could get lost in, in the shuffle. But it, you have to show something in that time period to where you can earn like a, a second check. Like it's not like that number 15 draft pick money is it, it don't get me wrong, it's life changing, but compared to your second check, eh, you know, and and to be so so bad. And it's not that he was bad bad on the football field, it's that he didn't do things in the locker room that he was supposed to. Well, and, Jay wouldn't have started him if he wasn't told to. I mean, Jay oh, yeah. was explicitly told by the owner, this is who I want to start. So, Jay, you know. Yeah, he, he just, he, said, he just okay. was not ready to start in the NFL. Like, yeah. he was not ready. Um, yeah, this is this is interesting. Um, you know, Roethlisberger said, I was just telling Coach Sully, that's Mike Sullivan, uh, the other day that his release and throwing motion mechanics are some of the prettiest I've ever seen. I told him I wish the I had prettiest that. Prettiest I've ever seen. That's, well, that's they might be better than yours, Ben. But oh, yes. I don't know yes. about the prettiest I've ever seen. Uh, he said, I told him I wish I had that. I joked that he could throw it through a car wash and it wouldn't get wet. Uh, in evaluating Haskins, Sullivan said he's been impressed with the Ohio State product's focus and discipline. Huh. 
Okay. Well, you remember a guy named Jamarcus Russell that could throw the football yeah. like 75 yards from his knees? Yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, that, that doesn't always equate to a good quarterback. You're 100% right. 100% just right. Curious. So just because, I don't know if Ben like, knows that or not, though. Ben might not. Quarterbacking is pretty much all mental. No, I mean, there's okay. a lot of you got to have physical yes. traits. You got to have, and I do think he has some physical traits. He obviously is a big, strong guy, and he's got a cannon. I don't know how accurate that cannon is, um, but he's but he's got an arm. Arm strength is not going to be his issue. It's going to be accuracy, the ability to read the defenses, the ability to learn the offenses. Like, like these are things that he's got to do to to show that that he could play in this league. But I just. I don't know, man. If you're already, you're starting basically your third year, and you're already having to just like prove like to people that you love football, like we and like <laughs> if you're looking for your comeback story on year three of your career, that's that's probably not the career you're gonna f- like finish your life with. That's I I feel like coming out and saying it publicly, like I just need to prove to my teammates that, that makes I love it football. Worse. Yeah, I, I think it kind of does. Yeah, I think that makes it worse. Like I, I don't know. Like I think. Having the majority of America forgetting that you still play football and exist is better than coming out and like bringing attention to the fact that oh shit you do still exist how <laughs> how did you get a second job like I it's just weird it really is well, let's it, just wish him all the luck in the world how about that yes I'm I'm game with I, that I'll be take Ben Roethlisberger's shot I I want good things for I want an embarrassing end to number seven well we all know that I want, I want humiliation it it's coming it's coming. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.